Hey and welcome to another tutorial. Today I will show you how to create this old Pepsi logo with water drops over the logo and it will be done in PowerPoint. Actually the water drops could be created in the Microsoft Word as well but I'm using PowerPoint mainly for the Pepsi logo and for sampling the colors using the eyedropper tool. So today I don't have any comparison picture but the inspiration comes from this website ECSS Expert, Expert when they did recreated a lot of logos using the CSS only, no using no images. And there are many different logos, seems like, you know, I've actually also covered some of them in my tutorials like the Nike and McDonald's and maybe yeah, in the British Petrol and the Apple as well. It's just a coincidence just because actually the Adidas is, I've also created in Word. It's just a coincidence just because those are the most popular logos out there. So anyway, let's uh, quickly examine our picture and let's get started in the blank presentation where I've already pasted in the you know, image from the internet so I will zoom uh, zoom in over the logo itself and I will try to find this like a sine wave shape in the default you know shape so I'll insert shape and there is one shape which looks similar which is this wave shape it kind of makes sense to name this wave so I will draw this wave shape like this I, I will select rotate and flip vertically and I will most likely right click and select format shape and increase the transparency for the fill just so i can see the image below and i will try to make it as wavy as possible using this slider maybe resize it a little bit seems like you know it's not a perfect sine wave logo you know the logo is either not using the perfect sine wave or the wave is not a sine wave either way we have to rotate it a little bit and just you know hope that nobody will notice that the, the wave is just just a tiny bit different but i don't want to spend too much time on the wave itself so i will i will say i'm happy with the, with the wave as it is so i will draw the oval so i will select insert shapes oval and i will draw it with the shift key so just that is a circle not an oval and position it properly maybe i don't need to increase the transparency for the for the fill just i think this is fine i will select both shapes and select merge shapes fragment that will create, you know, just break everything into small pieces as those, uh, you know, two shapes are overlapping. I don't need this, maybe I will need it for a color, so I just move it to the side. But I probably don't need those, you know, extra shapes on the left and uh, on the right and left. But I need to set the right color, so I will sample, I will use the eyedropper tool to sample the red color, the navy, navy color, and the middle one should be, of course, white. I probably don't need this shape anyway, but I'll keep it there just in case. I will select all three shapes with my shift key being pressed and set the line to no line and I believe we are done with the with the Pepsi logo. I will probably select all three shapes and group them together holding the control G on my keyboard and resize it to be just a little bit bigger so it's filling up our you know slide nicely. So we can jump to the actual you know topic of this tutorial which is the water, water drops. So I will select insert shapes and I will draw a new oval like this. This will be our water drop. And for this one, I want this, uh, you know, fill to be somehow similar to the background, but it should be a lighter around the edges because that's where the light is scattering the most. So I will select the gradient fill and I will select, you know, if I start with the default one, I will change the type to radial, which will go from the center and the middle color will be, you know, I will sample this one, but I will open the more color properties and make it just a tiny bit lighter like this. And the, you know, the second stop, I will also sample this color, but make it much brighter. So I will select more colors, colors and move the slider more to the, you know, more up like this. And I may change the position just so it's all, all, all only around the edges. So just like this. For the outline, I may just, with now I may go with the solid outline being set to white color with a little bit of transparency, like, I don't know, 60 or 40. And what I need for our water up are those highlights. We can either draw them or we can use a 3D effects to get the highlights for us, which is be, of course much easier. So I'll open effects, 3D rotation, and I will select preset being the front perspective, which will not change the view in any way. But now this is a 3D object, so I can open the 3D format and set the top bevel to be this uh, rounded one, which will immediately get us some highlights. I will increase the width just so it goes all the way to the middle. I'm pressing the up arrow key on my keyboard and I will maybe increase the height as well so it's a little bit stronger. Now this is not how the water drop looks like. It, you know, usually it only casts the light uh, but a little bit of shadow. So what we can do is we can change lighting to some lighting which doesn't have too much shadows. For example, this contrasting one. 
if I select it, you know, will only get highlights. I can move it around, but those highlights are, you know, very subtle. It's hard to set it, you know, to a bigger value, even if I change it to metal. I actually find out that the other way how to get highlights and not shadows it to set, is to set the lighting to be flat. So if I change this to flat, despite saying it's flat, we will it will still give us the highlights, and you can see that those highlights are pretty strong, which is exactly what we want. So I will rotate the lightning just so it almost goes like the you know from left top uh, corner of the view. But I also want this uh, top bottom uh, light to be in the, in the corner like this. It almost looks like it's uh, it's like the uh, refraction effect or 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 ca caustics. That's what it's called for you know light scattering like this. So I I'm pretty satisfied with the result what we have right now. We can also you know almost of course tweak the look of it. But if I zoom out and I take a look at our you know water drop, it looks like a water drop a little bit. What we need to do is we need to add a little bit of drop shadow so it's kind of separated from the background. So I'll open effects and in the shadow properties I will select some of those default shadows, outer shadow going to the bottom right, and I may change the color to be red one, but of course a much darker one like this, and I may increase the blurriness maybe, maybe like six or seven points. Okay, that that looks that looks fine. Maybe I can still tweak the outline a little bit. The outline is right now in the same, you know, uh, looking the same all around the circle. Maybe what I can do is I can change this to gradient line as well. So if I change this to gradient line, just so I can see everything properly, I will have three different stops, and for you know for now I will set the middle one to be black, and I want this black that will be transparent later on. So I will set the angle just so the black is like this. Then I will change the black back to white. And so the, this is the one stop which is on the top left corner which will be a little bit faded but only a little bit like 17%. The middle one should be faded all the way to around I don't know maybe like 100% or 80% so it's not very visible around here and the last one will be faded to maybe like 30% so just a little bit. So you can see there is some variation in the outline it's m most visible on the where the light is coming from. So on the bottom right corner when there is this caustics effect and on the top left corner when the light is actually hitting the surface. So like this. Okay, I can, I'll again zoom out. I may change the outline to be a little bit bolder, maybe like this. And I'm pretty f satisfied with the result. So what I can do is I can multiply, or sorry, I can duplicate this multiple times holding the control key on my keyboard and for some of them I can change the size. You can see there is something happening in here and that's because the border is now set to too high value so I have to make it smaller like 10%, uh, 10 points and play with the height as well to get some nice results like this. Maybe what we can do is we can try to place the, uh, the border drop in between the red and uh, white areas. So if I do so you will notice that it doesn't look right just because you know it should be white below, below in here and we are using a gradient fill going from red to red. So we will solve this by using a linear gradient for the fill. We will you know get them, we will lose the lighter color around the edges but that should be probably fine. So if I change this to linear going from red to white like this there is one advantage of using gradient, it almost looks like it's being blurred. I, I have to just adjust the angle to match the image below, so maybe like 75 degrees, that looks right. So if I zoom out you can see we get this realistic look, it or almost realistic looking effect just that it's you know in between those two uh, colors. I will duplicate one of those over the blue one and I will Eyedropper, use the eyedropper tool to sample the blue color, make it just a tiny bit little lighter, and I will do the same for the second stop. But of course, this time the color will be much lighter, so more colors, and I will move it more to the top like this. And there is one more effect which is using the color, which is drop shadow. So I have to change the drop shadow to be dark blue as well. So dark blue it is. I will duplicate this few more times and again I can change the size but when I change the size I have to change the free bevel settings just to make sure it's not uh, somehow intersecting. 
and maybe I can do one, you know, one last uh, drop over the transition between the blue and white, and I will use the very same technique. I will use the linear gradient going from blue to white. I will move those two gradient steps closer to each other and adjust the angle just so the white is on top and blue is on the bottom like this. And that's it. That's how you create the old Pepsi logo with water drops placed over the logo. Thanks for watching.